spikes sharp enough to pierce anyone that tries to bite. A tail strong enough to whip out the guts on a predator. And a spear to make it a hard prey to hunt. Good day, fellow Priorian gamers or whatever. Welcome to Good or Bad. And let's talk about the spiky boy. Song the Hunch Dog. Kentrosaurus. Let's get right into it, shall we? Kentrosaurus was a medium-sized kentrosaurine stegosaurid from the late Jurassic and 152 million years ago in what is now Tanzania. It's one of the most well-known of its subfamily of pyrophores because of its distinctive appearance when compared to the most famous of its cousins, Stegosaurus itself. I mean those long intimidating spikes running throughout its back, and very few and small plates, unlike, well, other stegosaurids. It is quite, sm well, small. At 4.5 meters in length and at 700 to 1.1 tons in weight, depending on usually the amount of muscle mass used in steel for its reconstructions. It is also sometimes portrayed being able to go bipedal because of its center of mass being closer to its back leg. But its female anatomy makes it so that it's, it just could rear up to maybe get higher lifts or shoves, not walk. Its hips weren't like those of, you know, well, theropods or ornithopods. By the way, after its description, Kentro found itself in controversy because of another dinosaur, named before it, Centrosaurus. They were very similar to each other, and because they used basically the same word for, it, for that name. Henning, the, y who, the guy who uh, named Kentrosaurus, tried to change it to Kentrurosaurus, pointed tail lizard, and Hungarian paleontologist Franz Nopska, sorry, Nop Nopska, I don't know, sorry if I butchered the name, tried to rename it to Dirophosaurus, lance-bearing lizard. However, because of the differences in spelling, Kentrosaurus still valid, just like Centrosaurus. Truly a weird fascinating story for such a weird and fascinating creature that, weirdly enough, doesn't get attention at all. I mean, I never seen it in any documentary and the only place I really can say I know it is from Path of Titans, The Isle and Ark. So yeah, it deserves a lot more. Kentro has been a part of the roster since a long time ago. And it certainly looks like it. Its movement is... Funky. Not to mention the box like the head having inverted movement, how its ribcage looks like, well, looks off and whatnot. However, it still looks like a Kentrosaurus. They also chose the higher estimates in weight and its sound for once. I really, really like them. I especially like his broadcast. First of all, because it's an actual broadcast, and it has that deep but loud cracking, I don't know what to call it. And it has that beautiful rattling at the end. Man. I would love to see in the future animation of Kentro, moving its tail or spikes to make that rattling noise, or even use it in other calls, and its aggressive roar really would love that. Instead of rearing up in its hind legs, just have it showing its tail moving it side to side while making it that rattling noise before the roar. Man, it would sound amazing. And I really would like that, that rattling. It also 
has its spikes in the hips right at, in its shoulders. It's a little bit up in the air where those are placed. But judging by other stegosaurids like Gigant Spinosaurus and Wyangosaurus, which are confirmed to have large shoulder spikes, it is usually portrayed in a similar manner. However, some reconstructions put its spikes in the hips, others in the shoulders, and even some put it right in the middle. But anyways. At a cost of 10,000 amber, quick fit, and nocturnal behavior, Kentro is an early game powerhouse that excels in bringing down its hunters and a nice introduction to more defensive oriented playstyle. Kentro also has two abilities, the 300 degrees hit and forms. The 300 degree hits make it so that you can quote unquote aim where you attack, like you know, you see that tail going to, to one place to another. Weirdly enough, Konka has something similar. Thorns make it so that you can, so that if you get hit from the hips down, or another dino just walks near, near there, they will get inflicted with bleed. So even attacking Kentro is dangerous. Its stats also show its specialization in bleeding. It does relatively low damage, but the amounts of bleed it does is disrespectful, Jesus. Also being built like a keg barrel with legs, allow it to be quite tanky. Plus, it can turn in a dime. This all sounds great, but it is time for the negatives. Kentro can be weird sometimes because it's more than capable of defending itself, but it's still vulnerable. Its head is a very obvious weak spot, and because Roblox can't really sustain collisions, it's normal for stegosaurids in general to suffer from carnivores just tanking the head, facing through its body, and start hitting the head with little to no cooldown. However, stegosaurids also have one of the sharpened turn radius for any group of dinosaurs in the game, which helps them to juke their opponents and, you know, protect their heads. Still, having a long cooldown for its tail attack, consuming 8 stamina, and being just slow enough keeps this dino in check, especially when we see its main predators. It also doesn't help that it's quite, you know, in the slower side, side. being even outpaced by d for herbivores and Allo for carnies. Being very vulnerable to infection is also a massive issue, and I'll explain that later. And, of course, as a defensive dino, running straight to another dino just to slap it makes you not only extremely stupid because of the funny mouse button that guarantees at the very least 500 damage and at the most 1000 raw damage and another 1000 of bleed but running straight to another guy is usually freaking stupid so if you die because of it then i don't know what to tell you get good scrub as a defensive oriented dinosaur you will excel at 1v1s by doing the mind-numbing activity of showing your enemy your booty cheeks. Your passive ability and your massive bleed damage makes it very hard for some dinos to hunt you. Also, even though you get outspelled pretty easily, it's still enough speed to telekite your enemies. But once two or more are in the equation, it will be quite hard for you to defend effectively, especially for one of the guys here. Allosaurus is one of your main issues because of its speed compared to yours, good damage and bleed, and the worst of all, it goes in packs for the most part. Although it is, it is very likely for you to kill a solo Allosaurus, it's better to avoid packs. 
Also, its speed, as I said, is still fast enough to catch you, but you will be doing a lot of damage to its head, it will be bleeding a lot, and because this game has that weird, you know, I don't know how to tell, slowing down because your health is low, it will, well, get slower and slower until it either has to retreat or die. Concave is, is incredibly underrated, I swear to god. Even alone, it can cause some problems. But, yeah, one slap and that's it. However, impacts is very, very dangerous. Especially with infection. Inverting controls is a death sentence to Kenjo. At one moment you try to turn your tail towards a conca. And at the other, your head is already in its jaws. But worry not, as I say, Konka is very, very... can very easily die to your bleed. And you can kill an entire pack if you could, you play your cards right. But as I say, never underestimate Konkas. This is your worst enemy. A single Serato is enough to kill you. Its ludicrous speed, its resistance to bleed, tankiness, and high cross damage makes it a hard counter to you. However, your turning radius is still incredibly sharp, so you can outjuke it, but still, it's hard to kill one that knows how to play a video game. And Serato, unfortunately for you, is an easy dino to play. Even when having these hard matchups, Kentro is a force to be reckoned with. It's straightforward to understand, not to mention that you don't really have to attack to inflict bleed to your opponent. Because of this and its ease to use, and with this I really mean that you don't even have to attack to do the damage, but it is still, well, a little difficult. It's a little higher skill throw for players that love to run face first to their opponents. So, I will put it in mid good tier. <laughs> what do you guys think about my placement? Was I fair to this prickly little goober? Put it in the comments below in a respectful manner. Have a good one. And uh... la semana pasada fue mi cumpleaños.